pray. <clears throat> Supreme God of light, unquenchable and life eternal, in the baptismal waters, you wash us with your grace and claim us as members of Christ's family. You call us to be reflections of your light of love, to scatter, to overcome the world's dark corners. May your compassion be embodied in our concern and our care for one another. Praying in Jesus' name, amen. amen. As I have said, we, we returned Wednesday from five delightful days with our family in Hershey Park. Fifteen of us in all. I must tell you how, how happy I am that you called me to be your priest. Because I have to confess, I'm completely crazy. <laughs> there, is, there is no ride at Hershey Park, not one, that Tom White won't go on. <laughs> Wildcats Revenge. Candemonium, the super duper looper, all of them. And how crazy is that? We stayed in five cabins at Hershey's campgrounds. We enjoyed evenings together roasting marshmallows for schmores. And imbibing with one, well, maybe two Hershey Kiss martinis. <laughs> with minimal artificial light, nights are really dark there, making the twinkling stars absolutely dazzling. And each night as I lounged around the campfire, I was awed by the countless fireflies illumining the darkness with their intermittent light. That experience helped prepare me for my return to this pulpit this morning. For there is something wonderfully special and uplifting when light shines in darkness. That's how the gospel writer John describes Jesus, God's son, coming to earth. John writes, God's word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. In him was life, and the life was the light, the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This gospel reading just heard is dark. There's the darkness of this woman suffering unimaginably from a debilitating and chronic 12 years long illness. And then the daughter, tumbling into the grip of death's darkness, her dad 
completely helpless. Thankfully, thankfully though, Jesus, yes, the light of the world, Jesus is there for both of them. First, this woman who, according to Mark, has been bleeding for 12 long, horrible years, her condition renders her ritually unclean, which means she's forbidden from entering the synagogue, the synagogue, the heart and soul of her religious community. She isn't allowed to touch or be touched by anyone without rendering them unclean. And so she's an outcast. We hear impoverished, a pariah, ostracized, lonely, beyond description. And yet, in in a stunning act of religious disobedience, she plunges into the crowd where Jesus is in a desperate attempt to touch Jesus' robe. So tremendous is her faith that this alone will be enough to heal her. And miraculously, it does. Jesus commends the woman's faith, and with her healing, Jesus restores her humanity, her her dignity, and her community is given back to her. The other woman in this gospel story is a daughter, only 12 years old, whose father is esteemed, a a member of the the in crowd, a man revered, a synagogue leader, a man of power. But no amount of power, no amount of wealth can save his precious little girl. And we are reminded Who is the ultimate power, the ultimate power in our lives? Somehow this father knew how miraculous Jesus' power was. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her. He begs Jesus repeatedly so that she may be made well, made well and live. And we hear Jesus went with him. Jesus was no less compassionate for this father in the inner circle of power and prestige as he was for the outcast woman. Even for those who do not have the faith that Jesus is the omnipotent, all-powerful Son of God in the flesh, who cannot love Jesus? Who? Jesus, compassionate. Jesus, empathetic. Healing Jesus, helping Jesus, loving Jesus. Jesus constantly spreading divine light the divine light of goodness and mercy in the darkness. What is there not to love about Jesus? This Christ bids each of us to be little little Christ to one another. Whatever the darkness Jesus calls us continually, and all his followers, calls us to pierce the darkness with the unquenchable light of his love. And here's the thing. All, all the world's darkness, 
all the world's darkness cannot extinguish the light of a single candle. Opal Lee, Opal Lee, a 97-year-old black woman, she knows this truth. Opal was only 12 years old when a racist white mob spewing hatred stormed her family's home in Fort Worth, Texas, ransacked it, set fire to it, and destroyed it. Blacks were not going to be allowed to live in that white neighborhood. As she grew in years, Opal became a lifelong advocate and activist for racial equality and social justice. She is known as the grandmother of the Juneteenth holiday. At the age of 89, 89, Opal walked 1,400 miles from her home in Texas to Washington, D.C. and the White House in her crusade, her advocacy, to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. And Opal made it happen. Now, 85 years after her home was destroyed by hatred, God's love triumphed. Thanks to Trinity Habitat for Humanity, which, which happened to own the vacant lot where Opal's childhood home once stood and gave her the lot free, and thanks also to a local construction company and a fundraising campaign, Opal's home has been rebuilt and has been gifted to her. Love's light, love's light shining in the darkness. It's always a, a beautiful, beautiful sight. So may we be, may we be Christ's candles candles of Christ constantly. And God's, and God's light also shines splendidly in this place, in this faith community, as we show our concern, as we care about, as we welcome, as we encourage, as we, we support, as we pray for, and yes, as we, as we love one another. I know Bev Openchain is experiencing right now our love amid her terrible loss and her anguished grief at the sudden death of her son. Our prayers, our hugs, our cards, our telephone calls, our visits, our casseroles, our heart aching for her. Through it all, God's light shines in her darkness. And it's a wondrous thing. You see, love builds up. Hatred destroys. Love brings hope. Hatred, despair. Love builds bridges, hatred, walls. Love heals, hatred, injures. Love includes, hatred excludes. Love forgives. Hatred holds grudges. Love's, love brings joy, hatred, sadness. Yes, yes, whenever, 
wherever, with whomever, however, however, every time, the light of God's love pierces the darkness. It is, it is a beautiful sight, indeed. A beautiful sight, for it is divine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.